नमस्कार खंबा गनी पीपल माय नेम इज अमृता तिवारी एंड आई एम योर टीचर बायोलॉजी फॉर क्लास 9 टू 12 एंड लाइफ साइंसेस सब्जेक्ट फॉर अंडरग्रैड ग्रैड एंड मेड स्कूल अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग व्हिच इज बीइंग देयर इन द डिस्कवरी ऑफ सेल इज दैट आई डोंट नो व्हेदर यू हैव कॉल्ड इट अबाउट नॉट बट द सेल थ्योरी या द सेल थ्योरी व्हिच मींस व्हाट इज सेल व्हाट डज अ सेल लुक्स लाइक इज अ सेल द सेम थिंग दैट वी आर स्टडीइंग और देयर इज समथिंग एल्स इज बीइंग देयर so there were two very prominent scientists who were there and they discovered and they actually gave the cell theory one of them was a german and uh, uh, he was was a botanist and another one was a zoologist so we will talk about the cell theory in the discovery of cell so cell theory now the cell theory was given by schilden in the year 1838 sorry and schwann in the year 1839 one of them was a botanist one of them was a zoologist and they gave the cell theory in addition to the cell theory another scientist came in and he added something extra to the cell theory and his name was rudolf virchow This Rudolf Virchow in the year 1858 added a term or a sentence to the cell theory, and that sentence was "omnis cellula e cellula." This was a term that this was a whole sentence that was given by Rudolf Virchow, "omnis cellula e cellula." We'll I will discuss what this term is about. But before that, we need to discuss the cell theory. So, what the cell theory is? So, cell theory says states that all the living organisms are being made up of one or more than one cell. Cell is the basic structure and function of life. And the last line which was being given. So, these two sentences or these two cell theories were given by Sheldon and Schwann, whereas the last line, last line of the cell theory was being given by Rudolf Virchow, that is, only cellular, e cellular, which means the new cell arises. from the pre existing cells so what we have learned in the cell theory is that all living organisms are made up of one or more cell second thing cell is a basic structural and functional unit and the last term that was the last line that was being given by the dot virtue that is only cellular piece of the which means new cells arise from pre existing cells okay so these are the things we just give a quick some uh, quick revision to it cell theory was given by sheldon and schwann in the year 1838 and 1839 further more cell theory was being added with more information by the scientist rudolf virchow in the year 1815 he said omnis cellula e cellula which is the last line of the cell theory but before that we will discuss what schilling and schwann said schilling and schwann said all living organisms are being made up of one or more cells cell is a basic structure and functional unit of life in the last line omnis cellula e cellula means new cells arise from pre-existing cells which means the cells that are already in the body the new cells going to arise from them only they will not be like any other cell coming from somewhere around from infinity it would not be like that so this is all about the discovery of cell now so so far we have completed 
the two topics in the fundamental of life. Now, coming to the third topic, that is the difference between the unicellular and the multicellular organisms. Now, what is unicellular and multicellular organisms? Unicellular. Anyone, any idea? I hope you might have. So, we'll discuss that now. So, the third term is, the third topic of the content is difference between unicellular and multicellular organisms. This is the third topic of the content. Now, before discussing this topic in detail, I discuss this topic in the tentative form, like uh, di differentiating between the unicellular and multicellular, more easy to understand. But before going on that part, we need to understand what unicellular is and what multicellular is, and what is the basic difference between them. So, unicellular. So, this term uni means single. And the term cellular means cell, which means those organisms that are, that are being made up of single cell. Now the term multicellular, as a name, the term is very common. So multi means many and cellular means cell. Okay. Talking about the multicellular organisms, see, multicellular organisms, maybe are, are present in different different sizes like the size of an elephant or the size of an ant or might be the size of a rat or might be the size of a human if you can just see all these sizes are different which means there might be a chance that the number of cells might also be different but there will be no difference or there will be no effect on the functioning of the cells of that organism which means that rat will also gonna eat digest the food will excrete out his heart will pump the blood all over the body, his senses will want to work, which means his nervous system is working. Same thing happens with us, which means might be a rat has a small a few number of cells in comparison to us, but still it, all of its cells is performing the same functions, which means number of cells and functions they are not related to each other. Much of it. Okay, unicellular, talking about the unicellular organisms. Because the unicellular organisms are being made up of single cell. That doesn't mean that they will not, not gonna eat or they will not gonna excrete or they will not gonna digest. They will gonna perform each and every function. But just the thing is that all those functions, which means either it can be excretion, it can be digestion, it can be respiration, all of these functions will be performed by the single cell. So for the unicellular organisms, all functions. Performed by single cell. Whereas talking about here, less number of cells, does not affect. function of cells. So, so far what we have discussed in this whole topic is that there is a difference unicellular and multicellular. We learned that uni means single, cellular means cells, which means those organisms that are being made up of single cell, whereas multicellular organisms are those that has many cells. Multi means many, cellular means cell. Now, in the unicellular organisms, because it is being made up of single cell, which means all of its functions will be performed by the same cell, which means by the single cell. All of the functions. You can name any function. On the other hand, for the multi
cell organisms because it is being made up of many cells so definitely different different cells are being there to perform different different functions they are specialized for that on the other hand a very important thing to note less number of cells does not affect the function of the cells very important to remember now moving ahead into that now we will discuss the difference between the cell and normal cell organisms okay which means the internal structures of the cell. Cell organelles are not membrane bound. Which means that none of its organelles are being there in a particular membrane, which like the membrane of the nucleus, the membrane of the mitochondria or for the uh, ER. So they are just like floating in the cytoplasm. Whereas for this one, membrane bound organelles. Next thing for this one can be seen only under. Microscope. Which means they are microscopic and, and uh, organisms. Okay. For these one, visible with naked eyes. Which means to see these organisms, you don't need to have a microscope, you can see them like that. Like right now you are seeing me, or you can see any other person or any other organisms which is visible to me. So those are multicellular organisms. Talking about the reproduction, so there is a sexual and asexual reproduction is being there that occurs in both of the organisms. For the unicellular organisms, they produce a section by binary fission. On the other hand, multicellular organisms they produce. is actually by mitosis. Next thing is they reproduce the unicellular organisms they can reproduce sexually by conjugation whereas they can reproduce sexually by producing Yeah. 
एग्जाम्पल फॉर दिस वन अलगा एंड पैरामिशियम एग्जाम्पल फॉर दिस वन मल्टीसिलर ऑर्गेनिजम्स ह्यूमन्स प्लांट्स और यू कैन से एनिमल्स बिकॉज ह्यूमन इज ऑल्सो एनिमल सोशल एनिमल So so far we have studied the single cell organisms, unicellular organism, and multicellular organism. Unicellular organisms are single cell organisms, whereas multicellular organisms are multi cell organisms, which means they are made up of many cells. They are unicellular organisms does not have the membrane bound organelles, which means none of their organelles have membrane around them. Whereas these one are the membrane bound organelles. They can be seen under the microscope. Only under the microscope, but not with the naked eyes. But these uh, multicellular organisms are visible with naked eyes. They can reproduce asexually by binary fission. The unicellular ones, whereas the multicellular ones can reproduce asexually by mitosis. Unicellular organisms can reproduce sexually by conjugation, whereas the multicellular organisms can reproduce sexually by producing gametes. And all, uh, examples of unicellular organisms are amoeba and paramecium, whereas examples for the multicellular organisms are humans, that is animals, plants, and certain fungi. So, class, this is all for today. And the next part we gonna cover in the next class. Please like, subscribe, and share my channel. And if there is any comment, suggestion, or question, you can drop down in the comment box below. Thank you. Bye.